Welcome back to another episode of Wine and Weightlifting Review. Uh, Nick and Tamara, otherwise known as the Iron Samurai and T-Bone, coming at you. We are going to review a bottle of wine, and we are going to talk about some uh, really important stuff relative to your weightlifting. And uh, we are also going to have, we have a special surprise for you. A super special surprise that actually is more of a surprise for us, or rather more special for us. Um, but you're still going to like it, I promise you that. And if you don't, you're a bad person, and we can't talk to you anymore. <laughs> Now I know it looks like we are uh, in the wild outdoors and you may in fact be uh, hearing some crickets. However, we are not. We are in our garage. <laughs> also uh, known as our beta training center because we have a garage gym and the whole garage is basically nothing but a gym at this point. But in the background is the wild outdoors and so I'm hoping you can hear crickets because that was the whole, the whole idea here is to make us look like, like we love nature. Yeah, like we love nature, which <laughs> totally is a crock of shit. We do not. We have no interest in nature whatsoever. Uh, this is as close as we're going to get. It's <laughs> sitting on our porch or sitting in our garage with the door open. <laughs> but what we do love is wine. By God, we love wine. So we went to another uh, wine tasting today. Bought some wines. Some of them were pretty awesome. We were hoping there was, there was this like elephant uh, I wine. I saw this bottle of wine and it had an elephant on it. Yeah. And I was, so I think we've already explained before that I like to pick bottles of wine based on the label. Yes, she does. That's and fact. there was an elephant on the label. Yeah. So I was like, I want that wine. And this was before we tasted the wines. And then it turned yeah. out that that was one they were tasting. Mm -hmm. And then I was disappointed. Very disappointed. Because it this turned out one that we're going to review was it didn't taste so much better. anything like an elephant. It did not taste like an elephant. I mean, what the heck? So uh, we got this other wine, though, and it's pretty fantastic. It is a Portuguese wine called a Vinho Verde. I'll put it up here. Woo, and I know. never would have picked this wine right. because the label sucks. It breaks the rules. Label it does sucks. not look super duper awesome on the label. Not have a cool label. Right, but it turns out it's delicious. It is delicious. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour some of this out, and we are going to first before we read what it says. So this is this is actually like um, a slightly sparkling wine. I don't know that it's classified as. Right, and it got a little bit of bugs. A little it. bit of effervescence or something. Like yeah. That. Yeah, and I have to be honest with you, I normally, I hate champagne. This is not champagne. Yeah, and I don't it's like a lot close. of things that are champagne-like. I don't even think it's classified um, as a sparkling wine in particular. Right, most sparkling wines I find ridiculous. They're just carbonated. That's really the only thing about them that people like. Um, so I'm sure you're going to enjoy those little baby bottles of coffee. Yeah, who knows? That I no, coffee's up. Actually, I'm okay with that. That's pretty. Um, but like normal champagne, like, I just can't get it. I bought some I always wish coffee. that they actually carbonated... Some red wine. I think they'd be hilarious and fun. You know, like, I mean, why can't I get a Malbec that's carbonated? Come on. I mean, that's all that we're talking about with champagne, right? It's like some sweet, ridiculous wine. Sometimes a little dry. And uh, you carbonate it with it. But why can't you get this red? It seems like it makes sense. Okay. The kava you go, I baby girl. Today because the kava is in little tiny baby bottles. Yeah. Again, it mostly is about like packaging. Things, I like things that are baby size. Also. Yeah, if you can get the good right packaging, you can sell for anything. It's amazing. <laughs> it's it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. You put an elephant on the label, a manatee on the label, yeah. and you make it a little bit. If we didn't taste bigger. that elephant one, she'd have bought it. And then we would have been so disappointed because it doesn't taste anything like an elephant. All right, so let's figure it out. It smells so good. What do you think it smells like? We don't usually do that. Well, I think it kind of smells What's like peach. What's on the nose? Like peach a little bit. It smells like peach. It smells like fermented peach. I can believe that. And then I think there was some like green apple or something. Mm. Let's see. See, I would totally go with green apple. Yeah, green apple. I think this taste, the taste is green apple. Absolutely green apple. And we're not talking about like candy green apple. It's like for real green apple, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like tart. Yeah, tart. The kind of apples you might actually make an apple pie with. Yeah. That's actually, yeah. yeah. That's actually so overwhelming. It does taste like green apple apple juice. It's delicious. But it doesn't taste like apple juice. Less sweet and a little, little even more tart than you might than you might expect. But that's really good. I like that a lot. It's really refreshing. I would say. Well, and it's very hot summer day. What does it say day. on the bottle? Because I'm blind. Also, you should know. She is blind. <laughs> no, on the front it says something about refreshing. What does it say? Up the top. All right, young and refreshing. Young and refreshing. Just like us. <laughs> Just like us. We are. Younger. Ridiculously young. <gasps> I don't remember anything about the 80s. Lie. Uh, 
So it is young and refreshing. It is. It is wine younger than we are. Great summer wine. It is a good summer wine, and like I said, it is actually ridiculously hot right now. We're in North Carolina. No, no, no. And by if by right now you mean in the last few days. If by right now you mean at this moment, no, because I'm cold. She's winning. <laughs> <laughs> A woman who did not grow up with a lot of snow. He's making me so sit outside saying. in the cold. <laughs> yeah. So if you are like me and you're used to rainy, dreary weather all year long, then this is ridiculously warm. Right if you are like me and you are a native of Phoenix, right, and spent most of your life in Miami, then this is cold. Yes. So anyway, you take your pick. Um, but the wine tastes like green apple. We both are pretty uh, uh, into that belief. Tastes really good though. I like it a lot. It does have a and little bit of that sparkle. And it was not expensive. How much was that? Like eleven or twelve dollars, something like that. It also has random facts on the back. I'm gonna read you one. <laughs> Did you know that it says dot dot dot? If you don't know, I'm a big fan of the ellipses. The Japanese Postal Service uh, created a special edition of stamp with the Casal Garcia label, which is this right here, which I find kind of interesting. See, I would Very have, if I had known there were random facts on this bottle, I probably would have enjoyed it more for the label. Yeah, that's true. You might have actually picked it like, just for the random I'm, facts. Yes, I'm buying this wine for the random facts. Yeah, so uh, the label actually is being redeemed slightly for the random that's facts. That's actually the back label, not the front label. Yeah, so that's true. I'd have to look at it. So this wine gets a huge thumbs up. However, we're not done yet because every wine should be paired with some kind of food. Yes. And this is where a special treat comes in. A special treat for us. Not for you. Not for you, sorry. And that is a bowl of Captain Crunch. No, <laughs> crunch berries. Crunch berries. Crunch berries. So, Can you see the berries? Yeah, we're gonna crunch berries in case you're living in a dungeon and you don't know what that is. <laughs> they look like that. Mmm, crunch berries. Oh my god, that's so good. It's phenomenal. I haven't had crunch berries in a long time. This is really good. It's so sweet, I think I I'm gonna die. She's gonna die. Except for the fact that it's really not so sweet, as we found out on the label. Mm hmm. How, much, how many grams of sugar per serving? There are only 11 grams of sugar per serving mm -hmm. in Crunch Berries. So, all of y'all people who think that Crunch Berries are not good for you. Yeah. Bullshit. You're wrong. They're phenomenal for you. I'm gonna squat another Maybe PR tomorrow because of Crunch Berries. Mm hmm. She is. So, the reason we're using Captain Crunch and pairing it with this is because. It's delicious. Gary Vaynerchuk once did an episode of his wine show where he told us that the best food to pair with a Riesling late at night was Captain Crunch. Actually, what he was asked was, what's the best um, wine to pair with breakfast cereal? And of course, he wisely said that the best breakfast cereal ever was Captain Crunch. And so uh, he told us it was Riesling. And we bought a bottle of Riesling with the express purpose of doing a wine and weight lifting review with um, the Captain Crunch. But that didn't happen because we just drank the bottle of Riesling and it disappeared on us. But now we have this. And this is white. Riesling is white. Close enough. <laughs> and I'm eating my shirt. You are. It's good. So, what do you think? I sure should not think I've had Crunch Berries since I was like... Maybe in college. Yeah? And how's it go with the wine? I think I'll try the wine again. Mm hmm But I'm, I'm going back and forth. I'm, I'm excited about the country. I'm cool with it. No, that actually makes the wine taste even better. I know. It's good. That's not a lie. Mm -mm. I would not lie about this. Mm -mm. That's a great pairing. So, okay. It brings out more of the like sweetness of the wine. Yeah. So this vino verde here, which tastes slightly like really tart green apple and crunch berries is a brilliant combination. Mm -hmm. Makes the wine taste even better than it already did. And we already said it was a brilliant wine for mm. hot summer day. That's good stuff. It's real good stuff. We should eat this more often. We should. Why? Because of what we're about to talk about regarding weightlifting. Because you need to recover, my friend. You need anything you can possibly do to recover more and faster. And crunch berries allow you to eat more calories. The more calories are good for recovery. Yep. 
And the reason you need to recover is because we are about to try to kill you. That's our goal. We're coaches. Our goal in life is to absolutely destroy you, kill you dead, and then resurrect you like a squat vampire. That's his goal. I'm actually too nice for that. She's too nice. She's actually just going to coerce you. Everyone into... thinks that I'm the mean one and he's a nice one. Really it's really funny. Yeah, online, online, I'm like Mr. Nice Guy and she's all, you know, internet forum battle. Hate me. Yeah, sarcastic comments, all that kind of stuff. And so we do a lot of good cop, bad cop stuff. Uh, mostly on accident. But in the gym... I'm so nice. She's super nice, and I'm, you know... I'm so sarcastic. I'm trying to kill you. The whole time. She's trying to, re like, revive you. Yeah. So maybe that's it. I'm going to kill you. She's going to resurrect you. And uh, part of that's... All right, so the thing we are going to talk about today regarding weightlifting, which is the thing we actually do know about, well, at least a little bit, a little more than one, is... Uh, we are going to basically do a preliminary review, we can call it, of uh, my Squat Nemesis program and go a little deeper into it than some of the stuff we put online so far and explain some of the stuff we're doing in the gym right now and some of the kick butt stuff that you can benefit from regarding that. In other words, our goal here is to increase your squat dramatically. Whatever you're squatting now, you will see as wimpy in the near future. That's our goal all the time. Um, so if you don't have a clue what I just said, squat nemesis, all you gotta do is Google it. Just go Nick Horton, squat nemesis. I promise you, you will probably find my squat nemesis article. Uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff out there on it, but the, uh, there is one core article which just explains it uh, in great detail. Uh, I think it's called the squat nemesis program, an introduction to something about load. volume, load, and intensities yeah. in training or something. Uh, I can't remember my own titles. Thank you, Cliff Dyer, for that catchy name. Yeah, the Squat Nemesis program was, in fact, named by Cliff Dyer, our friend, who uh, did this by accident. He actually was trying to text me something regarding squat, and he had some other thing he said, but autocorrect made it, made it nemesis, and he just went with it because he thought it was funny. And then when I saw that, I did a backflip, and I kept it forever. So. I am now uh, benefiting, Cliff, because of your iPhone, <laughs> which I find awesome. But I mean, let's face it, Squat Nose, it sounds cool, and we like things that sound cool. Yes. That's very important to us. So uh, I am going to do a little quickie rundown here, uh, just what it is, and then we're going to go into all of the reasons why, or rather, all of the stuff that makes it um, a great program for intermediates, and that's really what, something we're going to talk a lot about is that... Um, if you are trying to get your squat up and you're not a true beginner anymore, um, this is a great program for you. Uh, we're also not talking to advanced people. We'll talk about that later, but there's only about three or four of those people in the world, so it doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's not even an option, so I'm not sure too many advanced, truly advanced lifters if are actually If you are a it. Chinese weightlifter yeah. who has the chance of making it to the podium, yeah, then we'll call you advanced. <laughs> We're not talking to you right now. <laughs> yeah, but everybody else. Um, so the Squat Nemesis program, is, I'll just, I, I can say it out loud, it's really easy um, and to understand in your mind. You just do this every day. You walk to the gym, you squat up to a max single. That is pretty much good to a miss, right? Whatever the heaviest single you did that day is, you drop 70% of that and do three reps. If you make that, for heaven's sake, you should make that. Add less than 5% of that one rep max to the bar and do another three reps. Then add another if you make that and keep going up uh, pretty much until you can't anymore with the threes. It's usually going to be somewhere between 85 90% and you can't really guarantee that kind of stuff. Sometimes people will do triples with more than they maxed out that day just because for some reason their body gave, woke up. Totally weird. So I just want you to keep going until basically you're not convinced you can get that third rep. And then you drop down to about somewhere between 50 to 60. We're pushing this higher nowadays, like more like to 70, even percent of your uh, one rep max and do two sets of five with the goal being uh, uh, two things. One, perfect technique and two, maximum explosion out of the hole. So if you get down slow, just so you get in the hole correctly and then you just come up as fast as you possibly can. So fast the bar pops off your back if you're doing a back squat or pops off your shoulders if you're doing a front squat. Um, 
So that's the basic core workout. And the program itself is do that as often as humanly possible. <laughs> Basically. Preferably every day. Preferably every day. Every day uh, uh, we have lifters right now uh, doing it twice a day, which is crazy. Um, something I didn't once believe would be possible, but it's very possible. Uh, but that core program, we're going to, after we did explain a little bit about what we mean by the word intermediate, because this really is an intermediate program. It does work for beginners. We do use this for beginners in a sort of a light version, but it really is ideal for people who are true intermediates, which is almost everybody right now that's going to be watching this. Almost everybody who I've ever interacted with online, you know, most of y'all who follow our stuff are probably in that range. You know, it's not like you've never squatted before, right? Uh, but you're nowhere near your genetic maximums either. You're not right at your absolute potential. I have not squatted in 200 kilos. Exactly. But it's coming. Clearly, she's going to do that tomorrow. Uh, so it's a great, it's great for those people, which is most of us, right? Um, uh, after we talk about that a little bit deeper, I want to go into a little bit more about what this... Basically, I want you to forget all the numbers I just said, going to the singles, triples, et cetera, because that's just a baseline thing. We actually have a really jazzy way of dealing with this, and um, it makes it work much, much better. In other words, it's a template, it's a blueprint, it's not the building. There's a difference. Never confuse the blueprint with the building. So, on this idea of what it even means to be an intermediate, we should definitely talk about that a little bit. Yes. So, go ahead. <laughs> For us, I think it's, you know, you need to eat your cereal. Um, there's a lot of ways that other programs define that. And I think for us, it's just, if someone comes to our gym mm -hmm. and they get a basic understanding of how to squat and do it with good form mm -hmm. and add weight to the bar and actually can work up to a miss, that's what I would consider a true miss. Mm -hmm. like, if you've ever seen me squat, you know that I can grind out reps. Mm -hmm. But, like, I basically want your miss to be a legitimate miss. I don't want you just giving up on a rep because you're scared of it. Um, so, you do need some time under the bar. I would say probably, like, three months. We say, like, 12 weeks is probably, like, a minimum. Um, mm -hmm. I think for some people it might be six months. For some people it might be nine months. Um depending on how often you're actually squatting. But if you're actually coming and doing like four sessions a week or five sessions a week, then, you know, after three months, I think that mm -hmm. most people's squats are gonna be okay with this particular program. Mm -hmm. um, with the brand new people walking in the door, again, like, we were talking about this today with my squats. Like, it doesn't matter how sore I am, it's how the bar feels on my back, really. Like, mm -hmm. I know whether I'm going to have a day where I'm going to be able to squat a PR. I mean, I may not hit the PR, but that's a potential PR day versus one where I'm like, I just need to get some work done because this is not going to be a PR day. Yeah. Um, like, at this point, I know when the bar's on my back, does that feel heavy? Mm -hmm. Is like, it really is going to be a heavy, like, for today? Or does that feel like an empty bar? I, when you're new, you don't know that because I think everything feels heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If everything feels light and you're new, then you're just not loading the bar enough. Right. So, we want you to have good form that's safe. Right. Uh, to be consistent with that form, I think that's the other thing for me. Um, if your form is absolutely breaking down completely at max weights, then, like, this is not necessarily the best program for you because you are going on max every day. Yeah. And there's kind of, I think, another way to define that max. Like, for some people, it's not actually going to miss it's like, where is your form like completely breaking down? Yeah, especially like on a front squat, you get like all roundy in the upper back. Yeah. Uh, that, that would be a miss. Yeah. Like I'm not someone who, like my max grinds don't break down in form, mm -hmm. but especially with front squats, you'll see people get like that thoracic really? rounding. And then I'll, really? then we might, if you have a coach, like I'm gonna stop you. I'm gonna say, I mean, you may be able to add 10 more kilos to the bar doing it that way, but not <laughs> Right. <laughs> <We're> not <gonna laughs> so, Too bad. like we want you to have that sense on your own yeah. That you could be like, you know what, that rep, was a little, that rep was a little too ugly, I'm not going to go up. Um, yeah. So, you know, I don't, a lot of other programs define intermediate by like your recovery and adaptation time. And we're just not talking about that because this is a program where if you wanted to do it every day, you could do it every day. 
Yeah. So recovery and adaptation in time period is kind of out the window. We ignore that. So completely. Yeah. Um, right, right. Like there, there are many ways people define beginner, intermediate, etc., based on different kinds of things. Uh, but our way of defining it is really simple and very broad based. What it means is that we kind of define almost everybody as an intermediate. Like, it doesn't take long to get to this point that Tamara and I are talking about where you honestly can, you know, squat with decent form with heavy weights uh, to have some intuitive grasp, that, you know, of when your form's breaking down and when it's not. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not for us at all about, like, how your gains are coming or how fast they're coming or any of that other kind of stuff. Like, there are ways to think about beginner gains that way, but that's that's not relevant to this program. So in other words, we're trying to tell you when you're ready to do this program, um, which is pretty much immediate. So the truth is, is that like what we're saying, like if somebody comes to our gym and they've never worked out a day in their life, these are the people we're gonna have to worry about at first, you know? Yeah. But the truth, I mean, at this point, that doesn't happen very often. You know, when I first started coaching people, I mean, I first started coaching people 17 years ago. Um, most people I coach were like that. Now, almost nobody, you know, unless we're talking about just a strict fat loss client, which we never do this program anyway. Like most people who want to come into our gym and lift heavy weights or whatever, you know, and are interested in barbells in one way or another, uh, they've already done a lot, you know, maybe they did CrossFit forever or they did, you know, a bunch of stuff in their garage, you know, uh, just lifting, squatting, deadlifting, you know, just random stuff. Even if the technique wasn't all that brilliant, like they certainly are nowhere near actual beginners before, you know, at this point, you know. So we're not actually even used to working with people who are that kind of a beginner. We're used to working with people who are Olympic lifting beginners, their technique sucks, you know, and so we can work with them on that. Uh, but true beginners, as they never worked out before, that's pretty rare. And certainly with the people who follow us online, like almost all y'all have been lifting for a while. So, you know, you're probably ready for this. I mean, our assumption, and we're just gonna go with this, is that you are an intermediate right now, you're totally ready for this, so let's rock it. Um, and then of course the other extreme is the advanced stuff, and we find that silly. Well, the other thing I wanna say about the intermediate, this also has nothing to do, if you look online, there are like some uh, popular or in various like strength charts that show like, whether your strength level is beginning, intermediate, or it, yeah. that has nothing to do with it. Yeah, what you can actually um, lift is yeah. irrelevant here. I, it doesn't matter if you're squatting 100 pounds or 400 pounds. Like, that has nothing to do with it. So any strength chart that says, like, if you are squatting X at this body weight, then you're beginner, intermediate, or advanced, that's not what we're talking about yeah. at all. Yeah, we don't care about any of that stuff. And that stuff's so silly anyway because your genetics play a pretty big role in that. So, um, you know, some people are just, they're never going to lift as much weight as somebody else no matter how hard they train, does that mean they're perpetually an intermediate? No, they actually might be rather advanced. Because for us, we're talking about, you're not actually an advanced person until you're, you're near your own your own genetic maximum. Like really butting so up against it. So if your genetic maximum is really, really low. <laughs> yeah, you're not, then, you know, it does, doesn't mean you're an intermediate, that means you're an advanced person now if you yes. reach that. And in other words, your gains are gonna come basically as slow as molasses, right? I mean, if you're near your genetic maximum, you're gonna be lucky to get a couple of kilos on the bar every year. Your actual goal at that point is to just not lose weight on the bar. It's not really to add weight, honestly, anymore. It's to just not lose it, keep it. A lot of people who are at the world stage are in that position. Their, their lifts aren't really going up that much anymore. Um, they, a lot of people, they have the same lifts for five straight years. Um, they just don't want to lose it because the next guy is going to come along and you just want to hope that on the day of a competition you come close to those numbers and the person you're competing against doesn't come close to their numbers. Um, so that's just purely about sport at that point. Um, but you know, in terms of their actual strength levels and stuff, they're pretty much maxed out. That's a true advanced person. Our goal, the goal of what we're doing here is to, as quick as humanly possible, move you through that intermediate phase to as close to the advanced phase as you can get. In other words, we're super American. We want rapid results. Big, huge, monstrous, fast food style results. Uh, that's what we believe in. So this program is results at all costs. We really do mean that. Because uh, we're real lazy. Yeah, we're lazy. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to work hard every day forever. Right, we're gonna do I this I just want to go ahead and get to my genetic yeah. potential tomorrow. That'd be awesome. We all want everything right now, right? 
So uh, we're cool with that. So, it, 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 so here, this kind of leads us into the second point. This leads us into the uh, second major thing to think about here, which is uh, one, so we say one, the program's primarily for intermediate people, which is most of us, but two, this is a results at all cost program. So what that means is it's not gonna be easy. Sorry. Uh, we're, <laughs> it's also not necessarily going to work as well for somebody who doesn't have the time to do it. It's not gonna work as well for somebody who doesn't have the mental capacity or the emotional capacity to handle what we're about to tell you. In other words, it's hard. It's hard physically, it's hard emotionally, it's hard psychologically. It really is. It's pushing everything at max. Um, in order to elicit the greatest responses from your body. In other words, maximum stress on the body, maximum, absolute, overwhelming amounts of stress on the body in order to elicit maximum adaptation to that stress. And over the last, I guess it's been about a year and a half that we've been, you know, that I've been uh, uh, working with this program, uh, I've basically been upping it and upping it and upping it and upping it. So I started out a little more conservative and every single time that I've had new people come in and do it, we've just pushed it farther and pushed it farther. And now we're at like crazy rates. What Tamara is doing right now is the craziest version awesome. that has ever happened. Um, it is awesome. And it's working amazingly. She right now, she's in the middle of, so we usually house our squat nemesis program in like a 21 day squat challenge. Um, Although, obviously, a lot of times you just repeat it over and over and over and over again. Uh, let's see, you just did your 21st squat session yes. in a row um, today with another PR. She yes. PR'd today with, what was it? 122. 122 kilos. And how many kilos above your old PR is that now? Well, it's 10 kilos above my all-time PR, and it's, can't do math. What's 16? 16. <laughs> yeah, 16 it's kilos. 16 kilos above what I started with at the, on day one of the challenge. Yeah. On day one of the challenge, I hit 106. Yeah, and this is again, if you had, if you've been paying attention to anything we've been doing for a while, she's coming off of a pretty heavy knee injury too. So we had to rehab her. So she hadn't hit that all time best squat PR in quite a while. This is before her knee problems, um, you know, started getting fixed. It was so we basically started, five months. Yeah, five months ago. Yeah. So she starts coming back. We go through this crazy long period where we don't have a squat at all. And then we got her squatting again and squatting like a maniac uh, on this program. And her squats have exploded, absolutely exploded. So uh, that's the kind of results we're looking for. Lots of people have results very similar to this. Uh, Chris Yusefi still has the record of getting 100 pounds on his squat in uh, under a month doing this. Um, we've had many, many, many people having somewhere between 30 and 60 pounds in about 21 to 28 days. That's becoming kind of the norm. And the people who just keep reiterating it again and again and again and again, they're seeing results uh, fairly similar to that. Uh, maybe not as big a burst as their first burst, but pretty big bursts on their squats. Uh, 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 dramatic increases. So my lifter Brandon Tovey, uh, who now trains with uh, Vulcan Weightlifting in Portland, Oregon, under Aaron Steiner and Trevor Smith. Check them out. Uh, that's my little plug. Uh, Brandon trained with me for a year and a half. Well, two years really, but for a year and a half, he was like in fanatic mode, and he took his squat from, if we're being really generous, a bodybuilding style squat at 90 kilos, maybe, to. 184 kilos and he only weighed 64 kilos at the time when he did it. So that's like a triple body weight, high bar back squat. Um, ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous squat. And he did it in only a year and a half. Um, we've had a lot of other lifters over the time uh, do crazy numbers on squats in very short amounts of time in all kinds of different age ranges. It works for everybody. John Mosby did, uh, he had 44 pounds to his squat in 21 days. He's 54, 55, something like that. He's in his 50s, like mid 50s. Uh, and, you know, he's not a genetic freak or anything. He's just a totally normal dude. You know, he just worked really hard and he got that. So, this is the kind of stuff that happens all the time. It's the normal. Okay, so now it's time to go in deep, baby. We're going to go in. I got, I got notes, don't worry. Uh, that helps me because I have no memory whatsoever. We were talking about computers earlier. She wants to buy a purple Acer. No, she did. She bought a purple Acer on Amazon. Because it's a little baby. 
Yeah, she likes little things. <laughs> it's a little big netbook. And he has a pink one. Yeah, I already have a pink Acer, which is badass. And I just this wanted a purple one. Yeah. I don't need it, but it's so yeah. cute. <laughs> but she was curious about the fact that the, she bought it like a refurbed version, and the person she bought it from said that he uh, uh, increased the RAM by two games. And two I was gigs. like, whatever. And he's like, like, no, I have no really idea what that good. means. I was like, no, it's good, it's good. It's an extra two grand gigs of RAM, man. That's awesome. Uh, and so I was explaining the fact that one of the reasons I went into mathematics for my degrees is because I have no memory, but I have decent processing speed. So it's like I have a computer with a lot of RAM, but no memory. <laughs> so I have to have external hard drives like this at all times. <laughs> So anyway, I did want to talk about uh, uh, going deep about this, really the underlying essence of what makes the program work. We have enough data now on enough lifters that we know really, really well those who did the best had certain patterns and those who didn't do as well had other patterns. Uh, the, the people who did the worst um, were ignoring all the people who didn't actually do the program very well. But among the people who actually did the program, the people who did the worst were the ones who followed it too rigidly. The people who did the best were the ones who basically followed the idea of the program. They took that to heart and then just really went for it. Um, and we're going to explain what I mean by went for it here in a second. But Tamara is like a shining example of that. Uh, we are going to do a huge write-up. We're going to do a series of write-ups. But one of the big write-ups we're going to do uh, explaining this program uh, is going to be using her as an example with like graphs, and numbers, and all kinds of fancy, fancy, fancy stuff. And we'll put that on my blog so that um, uh, you can get into like the really, really nitty gritty detail stuff about what this really looks like when somebody really goes all, all out, basically, what she's been doing. Um, but we can get into the essence of what is driving her progress right now and driving some of the other people's progress who are really taking this to heart. Um, and that is this concept I have where this program is like jazz, it's not like classical. And by that I mean you have an underlying core um, uh, structure or a skeleton, but you allow yourself to flow around a lot. So you might have a lot of like, you know, saxophone solos and there's a drum solo, you know, all those kind of stuff. And you never know, like you, if you're like in a, in a small like, four-piece jazz band, you know, and you're playing live on a regular basis. Um, even though you're playing the same songs every night, those songs sound remarkably different every night. So they are the same song, right? It's still true to say that you're playing the same song. There's a structure there, and that structure is important. I don't believe in chaos. Uh, just absolute randomness isn't going to get you anywhere. Uh, for the most part, that means you're leaving a lot of results on the table most of the time. Uh, you need some structure. However, that structure needs to ebb and flow quite a bit, and I mean a lot, actually, in order for it to be at maximum for your results. So uh, to make this point even clearer, I'm going to appeal to authority, and we're going to quote Bruce Lee real fast. Uh, he's Asian. Because <laughs> he's awesome. He's Bruce Lee, man! Who's cooler than Bruce Lee? Other than, you know, me. <laughs> All fixed set patterns are incapable of adaptability or pliability. The truth is outside of all fixed patterns. So take that seriously. In other words, uh, if you are too rigid in your program, then you are missing out on the thing we said that's the most important, which is maximum stress on your body at all times. So this happens in the gym sometimes, happens in the day, we're going to name names, but uh, in the Squat Nemesis program, the last bit is you do a couple of sets of five at a lighter weight, right? And the program says 50% most of the time. It actually says technically 50% plus. That plus is important. Um, and uh, 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 if you're really strict about, I'm just going to do that at 50%, the two sets of five at 50%, that may not actually be even remotely hard work for you. I'm not saying you need to be dying on these back offsets, these last back offsets, but on the other hand, I don't want them to be so easy that it's like you did nothing. Right? Same thing with your back off triples. So like, let's say you go to a maximum and you drop down to 70%, you kind of work back up and you stop yourself at 90% of whatever you hit. When honestly, you could have added more weight to the bar and done another triple. What about another triple on top of that? See, I don't actually want you to stop at 90% just because the program suggests 
that you go somewhere between 70 and 90 percent that with your goal being I want to reach 90 percent. I wrote that down because statistically for the most part that's as high as most people are going to be capable of getting. That doing a triple at 90 percent of your one rep max is pretty hard right and especially if you know you just did the one rep max you know we're not talking about like you didn't do anything beforehand you just worked up to a one rep max and now you're going back down trying to do triples that's hard work so a lot of people will be incapable of it so putting 90 percent means this is something to work towards it doesn't mean you can't go past it it's not a glass ceiling right so this is something we notice that people that do really well they just totally got that intuitively and they would just keep working up in triples so they couldn't take it anymore sometimes when you do triples they do fives it's like you know what Triples feel too easy. I'm just going to do more volume today. I'm going to do fives. Um, what Tamara's been doing lately is instead of doing two back off sets of five, a lot of times she's doing sets of ten or more or doing a rep out, basically. So like, that's horrible. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah, that feels bad. Uh, so I did a set of 25. She did 25 <laughs> reps at 60 kilos, uh, which was roughly at the time around 60% of her max. So she went down to 60% of her max. Instead of two sets of five, she did one set of 25, right? <laughs> in other words, what she did is she really went for it all that, uh, uh, in that moment, she went for it. So the essence of a squat nemesis program here is not this, the, the numbers themselves. That's not actually the point. The point why I have these three zones that we're working in, this one rep max and these uh, triples going on in that 70 to 90% range-ish, and then stuff below 70%, is not just arbitrary stuff, it's that I'm trying to get you to work really hard in those three zones. I want you, those are called intensity zones, and they have different effects on your body. That you want to work in those different intensity zones on a regular basis, you want to actually try your hardest in those intensity zones on a regular basis, and really elicit an adaptation in those different intensity zones. You want that, because they have different uh, 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 results that you're going to get out of it. So like below 70%, that's a lot of like your hypertrophy stuff. You maximize a lot of um, hypertrophy and if you're not doing Olympic lifts, I do like the speed sets because you need to do something for speed because uh, uh, you're going to increase it's sort of like plyometrics and stuff like that. This is just a way to do it with a barbell. Um, you need that in order to be really strong. You have to be quick, right? That's important. Um, with, if you're doing a lot of Olympic lifts, you don't actually have to do it as a speed set. She's an Olympic lifter, so it, it made more sense for us to do it more of a hypertrophy bodybuilding style. And uh, Plus, uh, I I'm really never like. I'm going to be fast at squatting, so let's be real. <laughs> She's the slowest squatter in the history of the world. It's actually <laughs> um, the 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 bodybuilding variation here is something that I'm going to be pushing a lot more in future variants of the squat nemesis program. I really like it. Um, most of us could use more muscle mass. That's just a fact. Most intermediates are nowhere near as muscled as they should be. I'm a big believer that your goal should always be to add as much muscle as humanly possible in your body and then lower your fat and then that's your weight class. So in other words, we don't know what your weight class is going to be in Olympic lifting until you have added as much muscle mass as you can possibly handle and then we just get you lean. And you do those two things and then there's your weight class. You just found it, right? And that means it might change over a three or five year period. Unfortunately, she's already heavyweight, so <laughs> you're kind of boned. <laughs> I'm not going to be a super. She can't be a super. That would be I adding another 100 kilos. too much weight, oh. so yeah. Yeah, that's not an option. But, um, I should have actually measured my thighs before. Yeah, her thighs are getting fantastic. That's it's all I'm saying. It's not okay. No, I mean, that's okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm like seriously walking around the gym rubbing the monkey butt. Uh, anti friction powder between yeah. my legs because it's so annoying. It's so hot and sweaty. And my it is warm. Like, this is yeah. too together. I wear tight pants for lots of reasons, mostly because they just look cool. But the second reason is because I also have the thigh rubbing problem, as most of us who squat all the time have. It sucks. And <laughs> so, Mine are already puts a little fabric in between in there. And now it's not okay. Mm -hmm. But I didn't measure, so I don't know. You didn't, yeah, I don't know. But her thighs are getting bigger. Um, more muscle, this is good. Uh, so yeah, we want you to be doing as much work as humanly possible in different intensity zones. But that's the point. As much work as humanly possible. Not do what's written on the page. Doing what's written on the page maybe 
is going to be enough work for you that day. It may be more work than you can handle that day. In those situations, you're fine. The problem is, there's gonna be a whole lot of days that you go in where you could do more. And if you don't do that, you've missed the whole point of our program. The entire point is maximum stress on the body at all times. During every session, every single session. There's no light days, every day's a heavy day. So if you don't take that part seriously, I mean to heart that Squat Nemesis is about maximum stress, maximum adaptation, going for it full bore in every single intensity zone and every single workout, whatever you can handle that day. Um, leaving the gym and honestly being able to say to yourself, I did my absolute best to kill myself today. If you can't say that, you're not done. But if you can, you win. Some days that means you're going to literally only move the empty bar and that's all you got. But if you can be honest about it, that's fine. That's a successful workout. If you can't say that, then you need to go do some more work. Sorry, that's just the way it goes. Uh, as I am often quoted as saying, more is not always better, but it usually is. And that applies to this program full bore. So uh, in just a second here, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna read out a uh, workout with one of our lifters, Emily T-Rex Sid. I'm calling her T-Rex. Sounds good. Sounds, ID, it sounds cool, means. yeah. Um, and uh, it's an example of the ridiculousness that is possible. <laughs> okay, so Emily, you wanted to be in one of our videos. Here you are. We're going to show off how much of a maniac you are in the gym. So, uh, Tamara here is going to read from your log, your online log, and uh, let's hope you didn't say anything nasty in there your mama wouldn't like, because she's about to hear it right now. And to be clear, I was just like, can we make a fun video today about Emily? That was actually what <laughs> That's what we said. I did yeah. not say, can we make this long ass video about Squat Nemesis? Um, but I wanted to make a fun video about you, Emily. And yeah. instead it turned into this wonderful and educational <laughs> Educational. <laughs> Video featuring you. Yeah. Um, so Emily was at the the gym today, and she and our other lifter Zach have taken on this philosophy of basically uh, squatting until they die. Yes. Yeah, so they are so, taking to heart the squat nemesis it, program. It basically means multiple squat sessions per day when mm -hmm. they can, and then also um, with the back offsets, doing really tiny jumps sometimes, like two or three kilo jumps. In order to get as much get volume. volume as humanly possible. And um, I'm just going to say I cannot do what Emily does. She literally rests like 30 or 45 seconds between like triples. Yeah, adds a little weight, doesn't it? <laughs> I it's amazing. I cannot do that. <laughs> I mean, I could if it was at seventy yeah. percent. She's a genetic freak. Right. I'm just saying. She's called so, T-Rex for a reason. She actually has dinosaur DNA <laughs> in her body, and it makes her recover really fast. So this is what she did today. I'm just going to read from her log. Uh, front squat session one: sixty kilos for three, seventy kilos for one, eighty kilos for one, eighty-five kilos for one, eighty-nine kilos. She missed. Then she came back and did it again and hit it. So eighty-nine kilos for one. And then 92 kilos for one, which was APR. Yep. Then she went up to 95 because I told her to, and she missed that. Um, and then she did a back offset of five at 70 kilos. And she honestly would have done more than that, but we were doing a seminar. So the seminar started. So she had to, <laughs> she had to stop squatting. Stop squatting. Um, but then after 45 minutes of the seminar, she was, uh, you know, ready to squat again. So she did front squat session two. Yeah. And that was. 60 kilos for two, 70 kilos for one, 80 kilos for one, 85 kilos for one, 90 kilos she missed, then she came back and hit 90 kilos um, for one, and then missed uh, a PR attempt at 93 kilos twice. Went back down and did doubles. 80 kilos for two, 80 kilos for two. Then went to triples. 70 kilos for three, 72 kilos for three, 74 kilos for three, 77 kilos for three, 80 kilos for three. And then she uh, had a protein shake and she rested for a little bit. And then as she says, dubstep music finally came on. <laughs> Initiate PR sequence. <laughs> Front squat session three. 60 kilos for two, 70 kilos for one, 80 kilos for one, 85 kilos for one, 90 kilos for one, 93 kilos for one. PR motherfuckers, so much happy and you don't even see my dance at the end of the video. 
We actually only cut that off. So. She went up to 95 kilos again and missed twice. Uh, then I told her to be done. But she couldn't be done. <laughs> she was she like, wanted to do the lower I weight stuff. I squat some more. And I was like, right. no, you should not squat some more. She you wanted to drop down, down so she, into intensity zone three. So she put 60 kilos on the bar to rep it out. And she hit eight. And it says eight only because Zach kept making me laugh on every rep to make me miss. And this was actually true. She literally dumped the bar simply because she was she started laughing too hard. <laughs> she hit that same weight for 15 the other night. Yeah. Which I had to match, so I read that on a log. I got all pissed off, like, screw that. I'm gonna I'm gonna do one for the old people. So I put one ten on the bar and did fifteen and uh and fifteen deal. reps. And then I unfortunately, being an old man, had to lie <laughs> on our front porch. I was like, Where did he For half an hour. Where did he go? And yeah. I walked outside and he was sprawled on his back on the porch. <laughs> I, I, thought, I, was, I thought I was gonna die. I don't know what happened. Yeah, so and I was like, What happened? <laughs> yeah, I tried to keep up with Emily. I was really young. Uh, lesson learned. So she basically did three squat sessions within yeah. a three hour time period. And so if you and look at it. And hit a PR yeah. in the first session and then hit another PR yeah. in the third session. So right. So she had multiple PRs at different sessions with lots. And she hit that third PR, that really big one, the 93 kilo front And squat. it looked even more solid. Than this, this was before. after she'd already done two sessions. And in those sessions, she did a ton of volume work. Uh, it was awesome. So, and in, in the future, future write-ups, I'll put the numbers in and show you exactly what happened in specific details. But if you look at it, it cover it's that is the squat nemesis program. It's just that plus a whole bunch of extra stuff in different intensity zones at different times. So she did a ton of the back off work in that 70 to 90 percent range. That's almost triples, 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 triples. Uh, she did a crap ton of singles above 90 percent, really trying for them. And obviously, even the misses count technically towards your you know, recovery. Uh, and then she finished off with that body bonus set until Zach screwed it up. Uh, <laughs> I blame you, Zach, if she doesn't hit a PR tomorrow. Uh, in other words, she did as much work as she can handle in the places that matter. In other words, there is that structure. I want you to make sure you cover your bases, you know, the high intensity zones, the zone two and that zone three. Again, go to this Google Squat Nemesis uh, article if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about because I go into detail about what all that stuff means. It's very important that you understand that in order to uh, get the essence of what we're going for here. I don't want you getting too caught up in the numbers themselves. That's missing the whole point. Uh, we really desperately want you to get the essence of it. It's about the, uh, the music, man. It's about the music. <laughs> we want it to sound groovy and it's going to be way more groovy if you really understand that. So. Uh, another way to think about this is that with a program like this, you're like a, 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 a stream flowing downhill, down a mountain. You're, if you get too caught up in the numbers, it's like the stream's coming downhill and there's giant boulders there, and you hit the boulder and you stop. And you can't get around it. You just, boom, you stop. Uh, or you just die. Or you just die, or whatever. So let's say like you're going up, this is an example here is like, of getting hit by a boulder would be you're going up in singles, but you just don't have it that day. You really can't hit very high singles that day. Well, here's the problem, is if you take too seriously what the program says in terms of the numbers, you just created your one rep max 100%. Everything else you do that day is based on that 100%. So that means now all your triples are lower. That means all your, either you're doing the speed sets or the bodybuilding version, either way, uh, uh, even lower than it otherwise would have been. And that means you're getting less work all around simply because you didn't hit a high one rep max. So you're so fanatic about it. Like I'm willing to go up to 90% in my triples of this number, but maybe you could have gone higher. This is what I mean. Like well, sometimes what happens is, is if you're doing this correctly, then you go up, the single's just not there today for some reason. You go down, your body somehow gets a second win. You end up going up to triples and you get the equal or higher number than what you were supposed to get under one rep max, but with three. Now, another option is you hit that brick and you, you, know, you can't do much with the, the singles and you're like, you know what, I'm just going to go down. I don't even feel all that decent today. I'm just going to do a crap ton of volume going on the way up so the way Emily's been doing it where she adds like tiny little weight increments, you know? You go 70%, 71%, 72%, 73%, <laughs> and you just keep going up. And, and you may not actually be all that heavy that day,
but your total load, and again, I say this a lot, it's a very important basic exercise science thing to know, load equals sets times reps times weight. We want to maximize your load every single day. So we want to maximize it in every single intensity zone, but you're just going to go with the flow here and try to maximize your total load as much as you possibly can every day um, by um, going with the flow a little bit. If, if the way to do that is to just get more sets in at a lower weight with higher reps, then that's what you got to do. If the way to do it is like the other, for a little while their camera was going for 100 kilos, trying to get accumulate 10 repetitions. You know, so she at first was like two reps and then she just do a bunch of singles until she got the 10. And then it became like a couple sets of four and then a set of two, you know, like that kind of thing. Yeah. And by doing that, right, she's improving all the time. She's seeing herself improve uh, at that particular weird thing that she was doing. But, you know, we're also talking about no matter what she did, she got 10 repetitions at 100. So that's a load, obviously, uh, of 1,000 pounds or kilos. And I actually went kilos. for 10 reps at 90. That was my goal. It was a single set mm -hmm. of doing 90. Which you ended up doing. Which yeah. I did. Yeah. So that week in particular, I just said, I'm going to rep out 90 every day. Yeah. No matter what else happens in the workout. And mm -hmm. some workouts I went up, and some workouts I just did 90, and yeah. then I hit 10 and 90. So. Right. And actually, the day that I hit, when I hit the single PR at 115, when I hit 115, I actually wasn't going for a single PR that day. I was going for a set of five. I wanted to get a set of five at 100, because that would have been a PR at 100. Yeah. So I hit five at 100. Then I hit 105 for a triple, which was a PR triple. Yep. And then I went up and hit 115 for a single, which was yeah. an all-time PR. So but you basically did the whole program like, in reverse. I didn't just say, I'm going to go did. for a PR single today. Yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen. I just wanted to put 100 mm -hmm. on the bar and try to get it for five. So, yeah. you know. Exactly. Yeah. So in other words, what we don't have is an absolute, you know, rigid set and rep structure for every day. What we have is basic goals for every day. And you try your best to reach those. And uh, uh, you know, if the boulder hits and whatever thing you're doing right there is not working, that's okay. It just means you need to flow around it like a river and find the new thing that you can do. I'm so bad at metaphors. <laughs> well, I just rip off Analogies, other metaphors. Analogies, metaphors, all of yeah. that. I don't do that. <laughs> but by doing this, by flowing down that, that mountain like a river, right, you actually get down the mountain. If at any point you allowed yourself to get so caught up in the numbers, you never would have gotten down the mountain. You would just get, you hit that boulder, you're done. That's it. Uh, in other words, you could have done more work. You could have added more stress. That could have resulted in better adaptation, bigger numbers on the bar, bigger PRs. You didn't get it because you actually didn't work as hard as you could have that day because you were so wrapped up in the numbers. If instead you're wrapped up in the essence of what you're trying to do, which is maximize the total amount of stress on the body, AKA through the total amount of load in the proper intensity zones, then you're kicking some serious ass. That's the goal. And uh, you can do that by just ebbing and flowing all the time. It's like you're surfing, you know? You're just, you ride the wave, man. Uh, and really go with it. And ride the biggest waves you can get. Sometimes it's a big wave, you know, sometimes a small wave. But you just, you're, you're staying on that damn wave and keep going. All right, so that uh, is our wine and weightlifting review. And uh, let's do a little quick wrap up. Number one, kick ass wine. We love this wine. It's uh, Casal Garcia's Vino Verde. And it's from Portugal. It is a white wine that has got a little sparkle to it. It's kind of interesting. And tastes kind of like what? Like green apple. Kind of green apple-ish. And it's very tart, tastes amazing with Captain Crunch, or Crunch Berries, as it were, uh, variant of Captain Crunch. And, <laughs> and uh, the weightlifting stuff was a really a deep look into the Squat Nemesis program. We're gonna go way deeper in articles in the future that have like numbers and graphs and all that bullshit, but we just wanna really get out there and like talk about it a little bit with you, tell you what's coming up, and just give you a heads up about how you can make much, much faster progress with it, because I know a lot of you are trying it out, this is a way for you to make much faster progress with it, which is to, to, to uh, think of it as jazz, not classical. To be very Bruce Lee about it, right? 
Be water, my friend, as he said. Um, ebb and flow, ebb and flow. I want you to really work hard. If you are coming out of the gym and you don't honestly believe, if you're being dead honest with yourself, that you didn't put in as much work on that squat as you possibly could, then go back to the gym and do it again. Um, we mean that. This is a more is always better kind of routine. Um, it's all about results at all cost. We mean that seriously. It's largely for people who are willing. Uh, we usually call it 21 day squat challenge um, for a reason because it's, you know, you can kind of wrap your mind around 21 days of hard work. Um, even though many people just keep doing it anyway. Uh, but it is that. It is, it is absolutely overwhelming amounts of hard work. That's, what, that's how it works. It's just hard work's in all the right places. You can think of it. That's what Squat Nemesis is. Hard work in all the right places um, without any form of letting up. Period. When you pull back on the gas a little bit, you're boned. It doesn't work very well. If you really gun it and just go crazy, be maniacal, try with all your might to die via squats, it's going to work. It's going to work really, really well. Um, even though everybody around you is going to tell you you're going to overtrain and die. Eh, it's all right. You're going to be resurrected as a squat vampire. Woo. All right. So <laughs> that is another episode of Wine and Weightlifting Review. Uh, I'm the Iron Samurai. This is T-Bone, and we are out.